Okay, welcome guys. Um, making a little multi-table tournament video here. Last time I made a six-handed sit-and-go video, and this time we're going to be playing a full table. And uh, basically I'm just going to try to teach you guys some basic strategies that I use to pretty much crush any limit below... Um, a hundred dollar buy-in, and this is a uh, this is uh, a fairly low buy-in table, but we're still going to try to use some advanced play here. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be this is a, called a squeeze play, and I'm pretty much squeezing this guy in. I'm pretty sure he has a bad hand, and so we're trying to get his chips into the pot here, and uh, basically just try to get some extra value out of him here. Um, we flopped a pair which is pretty good so let's go ahead and raise this up. We have position on both players obviously. Uh, the turn it it's kinda scary um, so we're just gonna go ahead and pretend uh, it helped us try to represent a, a maybe a flush of some sort and um yeah we're pretty much in good shape trying to get some value here um maybe get a few calls here <laughs> mm okay it looks like these guys kind of lucked out with the flop i mean they had two outs cuz they both had the ace um so they were pretty much drawing the two cards and that that type of stuff happens um so you can't really get down about this, remember. Uh an MTT multi table tournament, it's really about outlasting your opponents and getting deep into it, so um you you can't really be disappointed if things don't go your way in the beginning. Okay, here we flopped a pair again. Um although this time it's we're not as good as shape because we're out of position and um basically we we had bottom pair okay now of course we uh we turned a really good that's a really good turn card we have three of a kind here um all right and now we flopped a full house so we should probably try to slow play this and try to get some value out of a check raise all right well i guess i guess these guys didn't really feel like bluffing or anything uh, usually it's a good idea like if you if you make a full house or a flush on the river regardless if there's one person to act or if there's two or three you should always check it because that way it looks like you don't have a good hand. Really, you, you should never be betting your strong hands because then people think, oh, he has a strong hand. I'm going to fold my three of a kind. But if you check it, the people acting behind you will think, oh, he has a weak hand, so I'm, I'm just going to, you know, try to bluff it or something. Okay, here we picked out, uh, we caught some outs here. We have pretty much four cards um, that can help us, and if we miss, we're gonna bluff. I mean, that's the beauty of playing aggressive: is that you're always people are always um, ooh, um, you're always keeping people on their feet. All right, they never know if you have the goods or if you don't. Obviously, there we didn't have the goods. We're pretty much setting up an image now. Um, setting up our image and later on we're going to capitalize on it because people are going to say, oh, this guy's always betting and he never has anything. Well, we're going to wake up with a big hand and we're going to make them pay. <coughs> uh, pretty standard fold with 8-7 there suited. It's a four-way pot and we're in position and you just you want to pick your spots and um it's pretty
pretty easy for people to put you on those type of hands because people play suited connectors very often, especially the lag style, which I play. Um, suited connectors, is it's like a cliche, you know, it's taboo, every, everybody's doing it. So, um, you know, you can, you can play how, uh, you can play the popular style, basically. And you're not going to see the same results as me because I'm limping under the gun with like 3 6 offsuit, and then maybe I get raised, and then I'll min raise him out of position with 3 6. Okay? I mean, <clears throat> let me show you what, I, what I'm talking about here. Okay? I have 3 6. This time I'm in position, and I'm just going to smooth call it. Okay? And it's very difficult for your opponents to put you on 3 6 suited. And then you hit a flop like this, which is basically a dream flop because you have a straight draw and you have a pair. And I mean, this is the exact the the, the exact situation that you want when you have three six. So we're gonna raise it up instead of making a min raise like we have been doing. Or actually, you know what? We we're gonna go for the min raise because. People have seen us do the min raise, and they've seen that we've had weak holdings, and now we flop a monster, and it's obviously going to confuse them, which is what the lag style is all about. And our hand just keeps on getting better and better. Not only do we have a straight draw, we now have a flush draw. So we're just going to keep on raising here. Try to milk milk these players for all we can. Try to beef up this pot and take 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 down a big one. Hopefully put us in the chip lead here at this table. And we'll be in very good position heading into the final table. Okay, these guys have been calling my min raises, so we're just going to do it again. You know, I mean, this is just ABC pl uh, poker here, um, and I guess this guy, this guy, uh, I guess he thought his tens were good. I'm not really sure what uh, his line there is. I mean, uh, I've been raising and raising, and he's been calling and calling with just an overpair. Um, it's pretty passive. Uh, <clears throat> and if I were him, I'd definitely muck my hand on the flop, probably. Possibly even pre-flop, because um, he's out of position to me. Um, at these stakes, most players know me. They know that I'm I'm a force. You know, I'm known uh, in the online community as being a pretty much not only a a teacher, but also, uh, you know, I'll take your money, okay? It's simple as that. Um, okay, this is an interesting uh, spot. We've been checking our kings here because we wanted to get action, but it looks like we might, we might uh, have been sucked down on yet again. Um, there's a couple of hands out there that can beat us. A straight and a flush come to mind, so it's all about picking our spots. Um, let's just let this one go. Uh, some other things I wanted to to talk to you guys about is basically uh, when you're trying to get better at poker, uh, watching videos is a great thing. There's lots of websites out there that have so-called pros who instruct and, and pretty much uh, share their winning strategies with the public. And uh, in my opinion, you, ne you need to really watch out for uh, what's being taught out there because uh, it's, it's pretty well known that these pros... Um, they're not that good, actually. Uh, usually it's just a player who's been running hot for maybe 100, 200, 300,000 hands. 
and they pretty much see this as a marketing opportunity and so they they sign up with a website or whatever uh, something like card runners or poker x factor hires them and then they make these videos and time and time again these guys go bust because their strategies are flawed okay um, right now I won't name the player but there's a player who plays um, pretty high stakes poker uh, on the internet on full tilt you can probably see him playing most days and he's like down five or six buy-ins this month you know and that's just um, pretty much that's unacceptable at, at the highest level and so I'm not saying these videos are bad I'm just saying you need to be cautious about who you're learning from <clears throat> uh, also sorry if my voice is kind of flat I have like a cold yeah it's supposed to be summer but uh, it's, it's about 73 degrees out here and I'm I'm used to like mid 90s so I guess that's what you get with uh, all the global warming people start conserving energy and whatnot and these summer temperatures really uh dip down into the high 70s uh, I'm not very used to that uh so anyway like I said just be cautious about what from who you're learning and be conscious of what you're learning you know lots of times um, because you're a beginner you're not really sure if if the advice is good or not which is why I'm making a video because I'm telling you a lot of it is not good <clears throat> looks like the pocket tense takes it down that's a borderline play but you see a lot of that at these low stakes. Uh, on the other hand, I think uh, r buying and reading some books is a it's a very wise thing to do. I mean, I've read probably over a hundred poker books. I own probably over seventy. You can look in my room, and it's basically like a library here. I mean, I've read everything from uh, Sklansky's uh, Theory of Poker to Karloff's Theory of Preflop Folds, and basically, uh, I've learned I've learned a lot from all of them. What I'm doing here is I'm trying to steal. There's about four limpers, basically. This guy min raised, and I'm trying to steal. Um, steal the the chips from these guys because they just flat called and by putting in the raise there um we're trying to get these dead chips it's called dead money it's pretty much people are not thrilled about their hands and we're just trying to pretty much get this free money here and we're going to snap call this here i mean we flopped a really good strong hand here we have the back door flush and we have the straight draw. We also have a pair draw. Okay. Um, what can I say? We made an aggressive play there. Um, we tried to hit. We tried to hit our hand and triple up here and be in very dominant position, but uh, you know these guys with their high cards lucked 